everyone. <laughs> How are you today? Today, we're going to do a very fun, very simple craft made with materials that you probably have hanging around your house. Are you ready? We're going to make a hand and fingerprint pot of flowers. See that? Isn't that cute? Take a look. Now, as spring is just around the corner, hopefully. So as we think ahead to spring, I know a lot of us are missing the flowers and we're really wishing we could see some. But since they're not growing yet, I thought it would be nice for us to make some flowers of our own. So first thing I'll do is show you the materials that you'll need to make your flower pot. I have some paint. We use paint. Now if you don't have paint, that's not a problem. You can use markers, uh, bingo dabbers, but be sure they're washable. Um, maybe stamp pads if you're a stamping family and you like to do a lot of stamping. Um, just know that you'll need to be able to cover your hand or your child's hand and do some finger, some finger pressing. Okay, so I got my paint. I have a plate that I'm going to use to put my paint on for my finger painting. You can see that I've already got the yellow and the pink there ready to go. I've got some scissors for cutting my paper. Ching, ching. I have some glue. I have a glue stick and also some squeezy glue. You can use both of these. Either will work. I have paper towel for wiping up because paint can be pretty messy. And then I also, because I know that I'm going to need it, I have my trusty bowl of warm water right here, right at the table, and a cloth for drying because we're going to paint our whole hands and I know I'm going to want to be able to get that green paint off quick. So let's get started. Now the first thing we're going to do is probably maybe even the funnest part, the most fun part. I don't know. I really enjoyed it. We're going to make that whole hand green. Because if you see right here, the green part of the plant, the stalks, the stems, are the fingers on your hand. Isn't that cool? So now, if you like, you can get a tray, like a cookie sheet, or a plate, or what have you. Cover it in your green paint. Smear your hand all in there and get it everywhere. And then press it onto the paper. But what I'm going to do is kind of eliminate the middleman and I'm going to put that paint right on my hand. Ready? Oh, here it comes. Splurt. Yeah. So I got a good dollop on there. And then I have a good wide paintbrush. Cha-ching. And I'm just going to spread it on. See? Oh, yeah. That feels really good, actually. Paint's pretty cold. I think I need a bit more. See? Told you this was the fun part. Ha ha. Okay, let's spread that around. Now, if you'll notice, this paint's pretty thick. This won't work as well if you use watercolor paints. I've got just plain old school paint, washable kids paint, tempera paint. That's probably your easiest, your best bet. But if you only have watercolor paints at home, you know, the kind that come on a little palette and you put the water on them and squeeze them and stir and stir before the paint actually kind of gets strong enough to work. Just make sure that you make it really, really thick, really strong before you try to paint it on. Okay, check me out here. Now I can hardly see the skin. My whole hand is green. That's how I know I'm ready to go. Okay, now I got my paper and I'm going to go not right, right smack in the middle of the page. That's what I'm going to go for. Okay, so spread your fingers apart and then press your hand. There, can you see that? Yeah, right down on the paper. And I'm going to use my other hand to push on the top just to make sure all as much of that paint comes off as possible. See, so look, stuck right on there, and then I'm going to peel it off. Ooh. That turned out pretty well, huh? Okay. Now I'm going to give myself a quick little, see, there's my bowl coming in handy. I got my, I'm going to give my hand a quick little rinse there. I'm going to wipe all that green off with my trusty cloth I brought with me. 
there. And now we can make our flowers. See, good as new. Now these flowers can be any color you like. I've chosen yellow and pink because those are the colors I have around the house. So, so I'm ready for finger painting. I'm gonna put a little bit more pink on my plate there. Can you see? Little spot, little spot of pink, little spot of yellow. Now, with the example that I showed you at the beginning, you can see that I made the center of the flower yellow and the petals pink. So I'm gonna do that again. Right? Okay. So I'm gonna start with the center. I'm gonna choose which finger I'd like to use. It's up to you what finger you'd like to use. I think because I want the centers to be smaller than the petals on the outside, I'm gonna use my pinky finger. Okay, so I'm gonna get my pinky in there. And unlike when we used the green paint on our hands, this time I don't want too much on my finger there. It'll just be a big blob and take a really long time to dry if there's too much. So I get just enough, just enough to cover it. And then I'm going to press right at the tip of every one of these fingers and my thumb. Ready? One. Can you see that? There's one. Two, looking good so far. Three, oh, I'm out of paint. I need a little more. Have another little dip. Four. Oh yeah, five. See, there we go. Now there's something special about the center of the flowers there. I'm gonna wipe this yellow paint off my pinky so I don't get it all over my clothes. Now usually the center of the flower, and I can't remember the name of it right now, it eludes me, which is unfortunate because it would be good if I said what it was called, what its scientific name was, but that center of the flower is usually where all the good stuff is, where the pollen collects, and that's where the bumblebees go to get the pollen that they use that's to make their honey and keep their bodies full of energy. Okay, are you ready? To make the petals, let's take a look at our example from the beginning again. Now yours doesn't have to look like mine. This is just an example to show you what it could look like. Maybe you want to do, maybe you don't want your petals to be round like that. Maybe you want to do big huge ones with the whole side of your hand. Or maybe you want to use maybe the full top of your finger, not just the fingertip. I don't know, that's up to you. Maybe we'll try a couple of different ways this time around. So for the first one, the one on my thumb, I'm gonna use my pointer finger fingertip. Ready? I'm gonna go one. I'm just going to do fingerprint, fingerprint all around the yellow center. Can you see? Let's see how many I can fit. Ooh, a lot. Take a look at that one. Cool, huh? I got seven little petals on that flower. That's pretty. Now I'm gonna do the same for the one in the middle there. I'm gonna just use my pointer finger again. I'm gonna dip in my paint, dip, dip, dip. Just pat, pat, pat in that paint. And I'm gonna see how many petals I can make all around. Okay, ready? Trying to make it in your view there. One. Two, three, four, five, six on that one. Take a look, cool, huh? Those are my fingerprints. Neat. Now, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna dip and wipe off the paint. Dip in my water, wipe off the paint from that pointer finger, and I'm gonna see if I can make the petals on my next flower a little bit longer. I'm going to use my pinky again and I'm going to get maybe get a lot more paint. Paint all the way down my pinky, not just on my fingerprint. I'm going to see if I can do some prints there. Ooh, one. Ooh, that's harder to do. Two. Looks different. Three. They're kind of sliding all over the place. But that's okay because I came to make a mess. Four. Let's see. 
five. Oh yeah, wow, these look very different from the other ones. Would you like to see? There we go. I used my I used my long pinky. So now these petals are kind of long. And they got pretty smudged because I don't know, I wiggled a lot. To me, I don't know if you've ever heard of a Christmas cactus or an Easter cactus, but that's a lot what their flowers look like right there. I have a ton of those plants in my window. It's too bad they're not flowering or I'd show you what they look like in real life. Okay, let's wipe off that pinky. I think I like the smaller circular ones better. So that's what I'm gonna do next. And you know what? I have some blue paint here. Whoop, it's flying off the frame. I'm gonna put some blue paint on my little plate here, my paint plate. And I'm gonna dip in my pointer, just like I did with the pink ones. And I'm going to make this one and this one blue, just for a little variety. Ready? Dot, 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 dot. See? I almost got five. And I'm going to do the next one. Ready? A oh, one, two, three, four, five. Five again. Now on those, you can really see my fingerprints. It's hard to tell with this camera. But you can really see the prints from my fingers. It looks pretty cool. Okay, I'm done with my paint now. I've made my flowers and I've made my plant with the stems. I'm ready now to make the pot. Let's wipe off the rest of that paint. Families, if you're doing this at home at your table, you probably take a break to wash up and that's okay because you can just pause the video and come back when you're done. Now, We'll get back to this paper. I have some paper on the side here for making my pot. Now this is where you can get really creative. If you have markers or pens or pencil crayons or crayons, whatever you like, you can decorate this whole paper. You would do all kinds of cool stuff on there. You can write your name. If you're doing this painting for someone else um, as a special little gift, you could put their name on there. You could write, I love you. You could draw hearts and flowers and a beautiful springtime um, landscape. I don't know, it's up to you. But today I'm not gonna draw anything on there. I just want mine to be plain for now while I glue it on. So now this piece of paper is too big. That pot's too big. I need to cut my paper a bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it in half. You see? I'm gonna fold it in half and make a crease. And then cut on my crease. Cut my scissors out. There we go. There. And let's hold that up and see how that looks. still pretty big. I'm going to fold it again and cut it again. Now this time I'm not going to fold it completely in half because I think that might be a little bit too small. So I'm going to fold it just under half over like that. I got a crease, see? Open up and that crease shows me where to cut. Some people would like to draw a line and then follow the line. And if you are just learning how to use scissors, that's a great way to practice some basic cutting skills, to, to use a marker and draw a little guideline on there before you cut. Now, here we go, let's check our size again. What do you think? I think it's perfect. So I'm gonna get my glue that I have here on the table. I'm gonna use a glue stick. Now here's a little hint. If you painted up your pot, before you glued it on, if you chose to paint it and it was on the table ready to get glued on, I would suggest not using a glue stick. I'd suggest using some liquid glue like this. But if you don't have any liquid glue and you just have a glue stick, make sure this is dry before you try to glue it or it won't glue very well when everything's wet. So I got my glue stick. I'm gonna just cover the whole back here. Oh yeah. Lots of glue on there, so it'll really stick. Let's see, can you see that? 
going to put that right on the bottom of my page and press it and press it, press it down so it stays. There. Now you'll notice, look, it's kind of hanging off the bottom. My pot's a little bit long, so I'm going to cut that extra bit off. If that happens with your pot, you don't have to. There. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Now, you know what? I have all this paint right here. Still left on my plate. And I know I said that I wasn't going to decorate my pot because I like a good plain pot. You can see behind me that I have lots of my plants in my house are in clay pots. I just like those. But you know what? I've got all this extra paint. I think I'm going to put some fingerprints on my pot, maybe even in a pattern. So I'm going to take three fingers. I'm going to make a blue finger, boo, a yellow one, and a pink one. And I'm going to make a little pattern across the middle of my pot for fun. Oh, I'm getting a lot of paint on my table. Blue, yellow, pink. Blue, yellow, pink. Blue, yellow, pink. All right, let's take a look. See? <laughs> Isn't it nice to see bright colors? Doesn't it just make you excited for spring? Well, that's the end of my little tutorial on how to make a paper and paint, handprint and fingerprint pot of flowers. Now, if you really enjoyed this activity and you're very proud of the work that you came up with, you can always take a picture and send it to me on our Facebook page at Yukon Family Literacy Center. Thanks for joining me today, everyone. I hope you enjoyed finger and hand painting as much as I did. Bye. See you soon.